school that I preferred means. And he thinks he's going where? He doesn't know. You watch him use four wheel drive. See that dog has four wheel drive, just like Peter and his van. But the other wheels in his van are his pushing. Ladies and gentlemen, I gave him a big command to head out to the right and around, and he'll work the sheep. They don't want to come in. See how he's got his eye. See that stupid sheep didn't want to come. See how he's let them run? Backed off them. And he'll flick around, keeping his eye. But notice the sheep have stopped. The reason they have seen all you people looking at them. And sheep do know people eat them. <laughs> Look how nice and gentle he's approaching. Look at the sheep, not happy. And obviously if he rushed in up on the hillside and they took off, that's when they can go out over that edge and fall. But ladies and gentlemen, he's thought this way, and the sheep are obviously a little bit crazy, but the dog has to learn to cope with that, because they're bringing in sheep who haven't seen a dog in a long time. You know, we're just flicking them about by where we tell that dog to stay, and the sheep, of course, are afraid of a dog to a degree, because, ladies and gentlemen, dogs are bred from the wolf, the dingo, and the coyote. And to the sheep, he is stalking them. So consequently, he's a little bit, or they are hesitant of them. And you know, in the early days, the farmers needed a dog to control for the shearing. Do it. Hup! See how I flicked them around? See how the sheep have taken off? Notice how I moved quickly? I could have been killed then. <laughs> the wee whistle to the left. See that? Telling the dog to approach. And watch how he comes. Look at the sheep's reaction. See that? Now you can photograph backsides of sheep. <laughs> See the dog watching? Those sheep would love to escape. But he must not get aggressive. Stop them there. So ladies and gentlemen, it's where we position the dog we control the sheep. So the dog is taught to manipulate the sheep just like governments manipulate us. <laughs> See that? Head down, no sound. So by not barking, he controls them well. I'm just telling him to move in on that. Where do you go? Where do you go? Here's one. Up. Stay. Stay. See the confrontation that that dog controls. So what's he doing? Oh, he's shearing. So that's how that word got into our language, 
But another funny term, when you take the wool off a sheep, we call it shorn. So when you shear a sheep, it's called shorn, which is quite confusing, because shorn is a definite Irish name. So, of course, it looks like the Irish introduced shearing. Because had it been the Scottish, it would have been Jimmy. <laughs> People do not say I've Jimmy the sheep. <laughs> but you can say I've shorn a sheep, which is equally stupid. <laughs> Could it not have been clipped or shaved? But I know our silly old language, shearing and shorn. You know, ladies and gentlemen, only right-handed people can shear sheep like that. <laughs> only right-handed people do. Left-handed people have tried, <laughs> and that's way too difficult. Do you know 200 sheep a day? Good days work with these, but the record, 321. That was done by an Australian shearer, Jackie Howe, and to shear 321, he took 7 hours 40. 7.40, and we wondered why did Jackie Howe not do an 8 hour day? The reason was there were no sheep left for him to clip. So that's really quite a sharp shearer under a minute and a half. Well, however, Jackie has now given up shearing. He's retired because he's dead. <laughs> but do you know that record's not? And other shearers have gone over eight hours and never reached that target. So pretty well done. The other thing is, with these ladies and gentlemen, when I had Storm, it was, of course, quite possible to put sheep like I made him do. Hold them with his eye looking, and the shearers in the early days were out there clipping the wool, and the farmer then carried it home. So things have changed, because now we bring the sheep to the building, but yes, some properties still have their sheep shorn this way. Blade shearing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as time moved on, machinery was introduced, and this, of course, is called a handpiece, and it has on it a comb and a cutter. And this method is the most common method nowadays, and we always put oil on our machinery, and that's what I'm doing now to get started. And ladies and gentlemen, the wool itself contains lanolin. So once you're shearing for a little while, the lanolin builds up on here, so you don't then need the loop the same. That goes there, so instead of doing this, you now do that. So that's how shearing has changed over the many years. But what hasn't changed, ladies and gentlemen, you still have to catch every <laughs> sheep. 35 million are handled at least two times a year. So millions of sheep are processed and of course it's quite labour intensive. So I'm pulling these on just to keep myself a little bit cleaner. It's bad enough looking like a sheep but to smell like one as well is too much for me. So therefore I now are pulling these on and we never charge visitors to watch me get dressed. <laughs> well, folks, we're going to now bring up a sheep for shearing, and we'll change its name from Woolly to Shaw. Good morning. <laughs> we would like one of you guys up here now <laughs> for shearing. We're sort of waiting for you. <laughs> Come along this way. This is sheep talk. <laughs> and of course I'm inviting the sheep to come up for shearing. Not looking good. I'm wondering if I should bring three people up and give them a haircut instead. That would look better. Well ladies and gentlemen, it looks like I'd better get down there and chase them up and bring one up and change its name 
from Wales to shore. Come on, we like you heard us. It's all the same. Well, you want to ask the guy, Kilder? Good morning, mate. Come on out and meet the people. Just like. Hear that tapping sound? That's where river dance originated from, <laughs> which is marvellous. But the sheep, ladies and gentlemen, that way and sit. See that? Now that's how you hold a sheep down for sitting, and that's good. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the position shearers put their sheep in. And this is good. <laughs> She's happy. Today's gentlemen, this type of sheep produces two lots of wool a year. And you can see that there. Quite nice wool. Thanks, Pete. The sheep also has one or two lambs. So this Romney Cross half-red type Wool and lamb, a great producer, and after five years of production, they're supple. And the end product, mutton, which goes to the other island as spring lamb. So it's good. And of course, for us, this type of sheep doesn't go on the mountain. If we did, she would look awful, production would drop, and you might get four to six dollars for its wool. Well, we're going to pop her in position, and of course, you can probably see like me, dirty looking wool. It is a mistake to put that poor quality wool in with the good. So when we're shearing, we discard the lesser quality, and this works out good. So we'll get on and change her name from Woolly to Shaw. Always starting on the brisket, ladies and gentlemen, and I always find it a little bit hard getting the wool from the brisket, but once that's off, good. Now bring her around and get that belly wool off. So the belly wool a little more processing to get it to the quality and obviously use more and stop production also. So, high country, merino, beautiful wool, but the meat from the merino, not the promising. But in the valley, merino can be nice, but the wool grows poor. See that coming out nicely. Now this sheep, ladies and gentlemen, are of course the popular breed in our country. And I'm just cleaning round her tail because we want her to get clean over our summer. And that's good. See that? Come off good. And now I go like that. But I put that back so she sees it. <laughs> Bring her up, and now we're quietly at the neck, but we've found it important to leave the head off. <laughs> so that's why it didn't come off. Because we learned at university in the second year that if the animal didn't have a head on, you'd get no wool production. So that's why it's important. And now, folks, all we do, work around the leg. Here it is. And right up, round we go. Under her arm. And what we do now, bring her around, not much, but let her sit. And there she'll stay. See that? A lot of people think they'd run away. She plays gentlemen, holding them like this, they don't mind. 
Now this is shape is troublesome. We can this sheet canceling. All we do is whisper in her ear mint sauce. Boy, that frightens them. Now the very last side. See that? Coming after it. So I think, gentlemen, the holding of the sheet is pretty much important for the whole shearing program. Down we go. Under her arm. And there it is. Well worked. Right down. And again. You can see how she's enjoying it. Now bring her up and let her sit. And there, that last bit to come off, we can then call her Storm or Cherie or something. Well, I reckon you're sure. All over! Stand up and show the visitors. There it is, folks. One sheep. So happy. So that's how it's done to 35 million plus. So that's the way she now can go back with her friends. Bye bye! <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? I'm going to lift this up and put it over on the table so you folks can have a closer look. And this weight, let's see, about three and a half kilograms, 11 to 14 dollars. and the string causes the movement in this section here and that's the section that holds the bobbin and to start off with you have an empty bobbin and you tie a piece of wool around the centre and you thread it along these hooks here okay so the hooks are there so that once you've spun a certain amount you just move it to the next hook and you keep um, going backwards and forwards along the hook just excuse me a moment and uh, so that will fill your bobbin evenly, okay? And then it's um, threaded out through the centre here, okay, through there, and you just lay it on your fibres, start again, so you can see that I'm starting from nothing, and it's just like magic. And off it goes, and it collects up those fibres, and it forms a piece of yarn. You can see how that's happening there, okay? So... There we go. Now you can make that thick or thin and you can control it with your fingers and you can make it all even or you can make it um, fluffy like this. So you can see if I leave that fluffiness there, you can see that that's twisting around and all the action through this spinning wheel causes this piece of yarn to twist and spin around and as it does it gathers the fibres and then it twists them all into, I'll get a piece of this here that's all in line, that'll make it easy. It um, makes it into a piece of yarn. So you can spin other fibres, but the wool fibre is a lovely fibre to spin because of the way it grows. And if you put one of these wool fibres under a microscope, like this here, you'll see that it grows in a cell pattern and each cell has a little rough edge on it. Okay? And um, those little rough edges...